And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Amen. I preached last night on repentance. Tonight, we'll, today, we'll continue on that same trend. I will call it the last page. We are writing the last page in the career of the church on earth this very day. Amen. Here I read to you a group of people that missed the rapture because they didn't repent. If they had repented, they would have gone in the rapture and not been caught in the great tribulation. Now they are seeing by the time you get to the ninth chapter of the book of Revelation such horrible things as men have never seen. In spite of the fact that demons have been turned loose and hell has been unleashed upon men and a 200 million man army has marched upon men and scores and millions and yea billions of people have been killed in the awful slaughter and plagues and judgments of the first three and a half years of tribulation and it's not over yet. The Bible records this. They repented not. Two times it says, they repented not. They repented not of their uh, ungodliness, their murders, their sorceries, their idolatry, their fornication, uh, their thefts. Uh, they repented not of the works of their hand, that they should not worship devils. Incidentally, all idolatry is the worship of devils. The whole Roman Catholic Church is a worship of devils because it is a worship of Mary, which is not the worship of Mary really, but a worship of devils. Statues of saints. Statues of, supposedly of Christ. And really is a worship of devils. A Catholic priest took me through his church in Barberville, Kentucky. Amen. This was the beginning of the charismatic movement. And uh, they were realizing their need of, uh, uh, of uh, branching out and, uh, and uh, trying to uh, sow seeds of uh, evangelism and accord with the rest of the, quote, church, end quote, uh, Amen. And so I was invited over to the Catholic Church in Barville, Kentucky. He took me through his relatively new building. Every time he would come to a statue of Mary, every time he would come to a statue of Christ, he would go down on his knees uh, and he'd make his cross and do such reverence. I felt almost like a sinner walking through the Catholic Church. He was doing such reverence to those statutes. Amen. And I didn't have any. Amen. Well, uh, really his reverence to those statues was a reverence to devils. Where the devil has invaded the church, the professed church of Christ. Amen. Their worship of devils, idols of gold and silver. Amen. The uh, Christian church, the world over, is full of idols of gold and silver and stone. Marble. The heathen temples of the world are full of idols of gold, silver, and stone. Amen. Brass, stone, wood, neither can see nor hear nor walk. That's the amazing thing about doing obedience to a statue or a piece of tapestry. Amen. In Timisoara, Poland, we went to a big Orthodox church. Uh, uh, one of the places that Billy Graham was getting ready to come in his trip to uh, uh, Romania, it was, Timisoara, Romania. Amen. And uh, uh, we were there going through that big Orthodox church in Timisoara, that's where the revolt started that brought down Ceausescu, amen, and uh, uh, we would uh, be in a Pentecostal service that night, and the place would be packed out, 
uh, beyond all description, not enough place to put all the people, amen, and they tried and tried to get a permit for a bigger church and couldn't get one, amen, and of course they have since built one because things have changed in uh, Romania, amen, but here we are touring and we're in this big Orthodox church and people are coming in and there's a, a table like a pulpit sitting in the middle of the aisle with a piece of tapestry on it, uh, the Virgin Mary and a child, and people as they come down the aisle are picking Picking up that tapestry and kissing it. Amen. And that tapestry can't hear. That tapestry can't feel. That tapestry can't respond. That tapestry can't answer prayer. But that's just as good as praying to any other idol. Because none of them can walk, talk, speak, or answer prayer. All of the humility before idols must be repented of. The whole Catholic Church must repent. I walked up to Walter Powell. He had got mad at the family uh, and his mom and dad and, and Brother Powell. Brother Powell was one of my main deacons in the Barville Church. Recently died last March, I think it was. Amen. And he's the one that invited me to uh, Barberville. First one I ever talked to about coming. My uh, friend of many, many years. Uh, his brother, uh, uh, Clifford Powell, not Walter, uh, Clifford Powell had uh, got mad at the family and took his kids out of school and put them in a Catholic school and joined the Catholic Church. I met him on the streets of Barberville. And I didn't know who he was from Adam. And he told me that his name was Clifford Powell. Uh, and I said, oh, you need to come out to church and be with us in service. Well, he said, you see, I'm a Catholic. I said, praise God, the Lord will save Catholic just the same as anybody. And he said, well, I hope I already am saved. But when those pains struck his chest and Clifford was flung in the hospital, he got right with Mother God. Amen. He repented. Here a group of people in the Bible are seeing more horrible atrocities than ever happened in any war. And they can't repent. Why? They got too hard to repent. They got too callous to repent. Too far along to pray. Amen. Repentance had gone from them. Repentance is a special, precious gift, if you please. You have that freedom this morning. You can repent! Or can you? Let me tell you, if you can't repent this morning, it's because you're possessed by another devil. Another spirit. Amen. Maybe several of them. If you can't repent, when we tried to get Connie Lawson to come to the altar in Barville, Kentucky, she screamed out, I can't, I can't, I can't. Why did Connie cry out, I can't, I can't, I can't? Because she was possessed of the devil. The devil will see to it that you can't repent. Today you better repent while you can I read in your hearing how that John the Baptist preached repentance. Uh, amen. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Praise God. Jesus came along in the fourth chapter of Matthew and preached repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then to the church of Laodicea, he said, repent. Be zealous therefore and repent. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous and repent. And the next phrase is, Behold, I stand at the door. Tonight, today, we stand at the door. This very morning, we are at the threshold. Amen. And repentance was never more paramount expedient than it is this morning. Amen. We to say I repent 
that I'm become a product of our times instead of becoming a product of the Bible, the Holy Spirit, and Christ. Amen. Here and now I die to the world to live unto God. I repent. Amen. Jesus said, I stand at the door. We will very possibly write the last page of our dispensation. The last page of the church. Now, amen, very possibly, it is our destiny to write the last page for Jesus stands at the door. Hear me. The king, the king of the kingdom, before you have a kingdom, you got to have a king. The king stands at the door. Amen. What shall we do to prepare ourselves? First things first, repent. Amen. How shall we fit into the last page of the unfinished events of the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. Repent. If you have already, do it again. Amen. Repent. Praise God. The kingdom has been announced to a calloused, hard-hearted, exclusive, ambitious, number conscious self-righteous church amen amen to repent church repent yes hey. amen enough of building programs repent enough of church growth seminars repent amen enough of politics to quote turn this country around. Hey, the only way we'll turn this country around is repent. Praise God. Preachers leaving the ministry to change the world with politics. They need to repent. Get back to first things first. Amen. Uh, after one man left the ministry and, and went into parliament to Amen. His co-worker said, My brother has diminished to Parliament. Amen. I want to tell you something. When you leave the ministry to get into politics today to change the world, I don't care if you're working at a job in politics. That's just the same as any other job. Amen. I don't care for you becoming involved if you're going to do it as a, a, a job, but don't do it as a means to change the world. You only change the world by getting right with God. Amen. Amen. We need to turn the church around first. Same ones that's talking about turning this country around preach that we sin a little every day. Nobody's perfect. Uh, and once saved, always saved. Boy, they'd make good politician because any any lie they tell don't cause them to go to hell. They make good politician, amen, because any deal they pull behind the scenes, they wouldn't be lost over it. Hey, amen. Make good politician because once saved, always saved. Hey, amen. What we need to do is repent and turn whosoever will around by repentance. Praise God. They say, well, we repented. What shall we do? We need to bring forth fruits, meat for repentance. Amen. A country where the national pastime, sports, take our mind and time until it has become our idols. We need to repent. Amen. Schools can't exist without a good, strong sports program. I don't know how I made it through the eighth grade in one room country school, amen, because we didn't have a state supported, amen, sports program, a, a softball team, a basketball team, a baseball team, amen. Hey, we played without it. 
Amen. We went through one room, eighth grade school. Nowadays, you know, much of the money and much of the tax levy is spent on, quote, education, end quote. Much of that goes to pay for the gym and the sports uniforms and the sports program because the school can't discipline its kids without a sports program. They call it school spirit. Amen. Nowadays, the ploy of the modern Pentecostal church is to build a big gymnasium, get a good sports program, even if you have to recruit from sinners, get them to come to church one time a year, amen, and you recruit a winning time no matter how you got to compromise the church, and standard you recruit a, a winning team, amen, get the big guys, get no matter how dumb they are, how stupid they are, they may not be able to quote John 3.16, amen, but get them in and get them on the team, and get a good winning team, and you'll have church spirit. You win people by getting them out to play ball. One fellow here in town says that I get them out to play ball and then I preach to them. Amen. Whatever happened to the Holy Ghost to convict people and lead them to God? Whatever happened to miracles, uh, amen, and healing, uh, and signs and wonders uh, to draw people to the house of God? They don't believe in them, so they've got to resort to a sports program. What they really need to do is get right with God. Repent. Amen. So many times a church, quote, spirit is a religious sports program. They've thrown all their standards out the window and now they're recruiting. <laughs> Instead of saving whosoever will, they're out to get whosoever can knock the ball over the fence, whosoever can carry a pigskin full of hot air, amen, to the end of the field and go through the goal post, amen, no matter what kind of a heathen he is. We're going to recruit. Amen. Amen. Entertainment world. They even call those sports figures and those entertainment uh, idols. Come on. They even call them idols. Why? Because they are honestly the object of our young people's worship. They want to wear the clothes they wear, comb their hair like they do, go where they go, do what they do, say what they say, pattern their life after them. Amen. Great God. Whatever happened to Peter, James, and John, and Jesus Christ, and John the Baptist, and David, and Daniel, and Joseph, glory to God. Hey, we need to pattern our lives after the right kind of guys. Come on. What about the holy women of old girls? Amen. If we were coming to God, to the judgment, amen, to the bar tomorrow, I'll tell you what we'll wish. We'll wish we'd have repented and got everything straightened out with God. Amen. Who shall judge? The quick and the dead by him whom God raised from the dead. In the morning, we're going to face him. He told us how to get ready. He said, Repent. He told us how to get ready through the apostles. Paul preaching here in, in Acts, praise God, that all men everywhere should repent. Amen. John preaching to the church. As the church gets ready to write the last page of our dispensation. And he said, Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. As Jesus stands at the door this morning, the only right way to get ready to face him when that door is open is to honest to God turn around go back to church back to God quit desecrating the Sabbath 
Amen. Go back to church every time the door is open. Have a revival. Hallelujah. Have a move of God. Go into the highways and the hedges and compel others to come. It's about over. And you're writing the last page according to L.L. Collins. Amen. According to Oscar Oakley. According to Gary Grubb. My last page. According to Dale Townsend. My last page. According to Garfield Johnson. Amen. It's the last page. Amen. And we've got the privilege to write it. It'll be the epitaph carved on the memory of men left to go through this horrible time of tribulation. Men, it's too hard to repent. Can't find it in their heart and mind to get right with God. They didn't repent even though they saw such horror. And it's going to get worse. Amen. This morning, your tenders, they get us a song. This morning, your supple, elastic. This morning, you can bend. This morning, you can say, I'm sorry. This morning, you can apologize to God and say, forgive me. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen. Well, at least most of us can. I'm sorry to tell you that right in church, a whole generation of you have grown up. Can laugh right through any altar call. They can laugh and prank right through any move of God. That's the kind of generation we're living in. Where preachers can make bad jokes about the Holy Ghost and church and the move of God and where saints can drag the holy things of God in the mud and not feel one conscious qualm about it Father Amen thank you that you've tendered our hearts thank you Lord God that you've given us a mind to serve God a mind to repent and call on Jesus a mind and a heart to be tender toward God and the Bible and holy truth and to walk before God in righteousness and honesty. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand with us. Let's come around the altar. Amen. Let's ask God to help us. You have been so prone to become a product of our lives. Hey, I want you to buck the times. I want you to buck the age. I want you to buck the standards that they've set. Go against everything the world's doing. Come to God. For eternity. Come to Jesus. Come to Christ. I must be saved. Thank you for $762 for Brother Oakley. More than sin.